Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The next topic in vasculitis section is Wegener granulomatosis, also known as polyangitis with granulomatosis. So Wegener granulomatosis is characterized by necrotizing vasculitis of medium to small sized blood vessels. The vasculitis also affects arterioles, capillaries and venules. Wegener granulomatosis is characterized by a typical triad of first of all necrotizing or granulomatous vasculitis, secondly acute necrotizing granulomas of respiratory tract which includes both upper respiratory tract as well as lower respiratory tract. The third feature of classical triad is focal necrotizing glomerulonephritis of crescentic nature. The disease often affects upper respiratory tract but in widespread disease it can also affect the skin, eyes and certain other organs causing the formation of granulomas. The disease actually resembles polyarthritis nodosa but there is involvement of pulmonary arteries in this disease. In case of polyarthritis nodosa, the pulmonary arteries were specifically spared. Coming on to the pathogenesis, the disease typically occurs due to formation of antigen antibody complexes. So in case of Wegener granulomatosis, First of all, there is an antigen exposure. This antigen could be either derived from the environment such as any allergen or this antigen could be from a microorganism. So exposure to the allergen results in the activation of NK antibodies in the susceptible people. These NK antibodies are formed against the antigen but they also recognize the proteinase 3 enzyme present on the surface of endothelial cells. So proteinase 3 acts as an antigen and antigen antibody complexes are formed which are basically proteinase 3 and the complexes. So these antigen antibody complexes recruit the inflammatory cells such as T lymphocytes, macrophages and neutrophils to the site resulting in inflammation of blood vessels known as vasculitis. The inflammation in case of Wegener granulomatosis is granulomatous inflammation. The histological picture reveals necrotizing granulomatous inflammation of the tissues such as skin and respiratory tract. Necrotizing means associated with the necrosis of the tissue and granulomatous means driven by the formation of granulomas. The granulomas are composed of giant cells in the center which is surrounded by the dead tissue. The giant cells are formed as a result of fusion of macrophages resulting in the formation of large cells as you can see in this picture. This here is a giant cell. So as you can see in this picture, they are large, they have multiple nuclei and they have extensive cytoplasm. Moreover, the granulomas contain necrotic tissue around the giant cells and there is also fibrosis in the form of fibrinoid necrosis. The inflammation of blood vessel is typically necrotizing which can be with or without the formation of granulomas. The inflammation occurs in a segment of the artery and this inflammation could also be circumferential. The disease also affects the kidney resulting in glomerulonephritis and the histological picture reveals either focal or diffused necrotizing lesion present in the glomeruli which results in hematuria and proteinuria. The histological picture of necrotizing glomerulonephritis is often of crescentic type which means there is formation of crescents in the glomeruli. The disease more commonly affects males rather than the females and the average age is 40 years. The disease is characterized by a triad of respiratory tract involvement, vasculitis and glomerulonephritis. So the symptoms of upper respiratory tract include persistent pneumonitis which is present in almost 95% of the cases and there is chronic sinusitis as well present in 90% of the cases. In more severe cases, there is formation of ulcers in the oral as well as pharyngeal mucosa. Renal involvement results in the glomerulonephritis which is characterized by hematuria and proteinuria. There could also be a rash and often ulcers are present on the skin which is due to vasculitis and majority of the cases are ANCA positive. So the diagnosis is actually based on the clinical signs and detection of ANCA antibodies in the serum. The treatment of Wagner granulomatosis is with steroids and immunosuppressants. 
More than 80% of the untreated cases of Wagner granulomatosis can prove to be fatal within one year of onset of the disease. So this brings us to the end of discussion about Wagner granulomatosis. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.